Welcome to another installment of Ghost on Air. Uh, I'm your special co -ho guest host today, Brian Hanoi. Uh And, of course, you got the regular co-host, Sandra Johnson. Hello there. And the reason we're here today, and I'm here today, is because we are going to be talking to one of the greatest people I've ever met. He is a really, really good friend of mine, uh, my mentor. He's trained me in everything I know about the world. Yeah, but this isn't about me tonight, Brian. Come on. How? <laughs> Um, no, you messed up my introduction. Let's just, uh, anyways, well, we'll have to start again from the beginning, from the top. Okay. Want to do it again? All right. Go ahead. Uh, I'm here to introduce and to co-host the show for a certain reason. My friend and mentor Keith Johnson is here today, and he is going to be talking about his book and all the things that go along with his book, Paranormal Realities. And Keith, here he is. Keith oh. Johnson! Thank you. Thank you, studio audience. Yes, we have a lovely studio audience. They're a very funny studio audience, so I can't make too much funny. eye contact out here. They're going to make us laugh. Yeah, they're trying to make us laugh. Okay. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Everyone. Before you go any further, greetings. Oh, oh, greetings. Yeah. Okay, yeah. now we can go ahead. <laughs> What's special about this show as well? Oh, yes. Yes, there, there is something special about this show. This is, um, hello there. <laughs> I'm over us. here. <laughs> There we go. There I am. This is actually our third anniversary. We began broadcasting Ghosts Are Near in July of 2006. So this is a very special. Hey, another round of applause. There you go. This is another reason why we have a special guest host. We're, we're really celebrating here. On I'm honored Nier. to be here. Today. I really do appreciate uh, it. Okay, Brian. All right. It's well, yours. <laughs> the show is getting more special by the minute. Yeah. Yeah. You, you actually, you know, we should have clowns in here with balloons. <laughs> oh, yeah. Seriously. <laughs> well. Today we're sitting here with Keith Johnson, uh, author, demonologist, uh, for his new book. You need a close-up of this. Uh, it's called Paranormal Real. Oh, there it is, Paranormal Realities. And Keith, I got to say, my friend, I am I am very very proud of you for oh, finishing well. this book. I know it's been Thank a rough, you, rough last few years to write this book. Every time I talk to you, like I'm still writing it. I'm like, you're gonna finish it? What's going on? <laughs> been a long time coming. <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little bit about the book, uh, what's in it, a uh, little things here and there. Basically, it outlines some of my experiences in the realm of paranormal investigation, of which I'm no stranger and neither are any of us. I would hope not. <laughs> <laughs> it starts out uh, from my earliest experience when I was very, very young. Carl and I were very, very young, about five years old. starts out there and uh, goes on as we grew up, became more interested in the paranormal and paranormal exploration. But uh, of course back then, you know, going back to the early 70s, you didn't really have much of an outlet like you do today. There was no internet. Exactly. Right. So it goes from really investigating on our own, like as you are very familiar with, oh, yeah. <laughs> going into uh, abandoned buildings and through cemeteries and uh, our best friends' houses who were haunted and stuff like that. How many no trespassing signs have we pulled down? How many have I pulled down too? <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't see any signs. Oh, I didn't see no signs. I didn't see no signs. Yeah. Well, we always put them back up as we left. I usually didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I did. And it goes on to um, when we uh, first joined our first paranormal organization, our first organized one and uh, different groups we've been in and basically goes right up to the present. Nice. Skips a lot in between because there's going to be a lot more chapters in book two and book three. Look at that, I'm going to get a trilogy. Yes, very nice, I like that. What actually inspired you to begin writing, Keith? Because I've had so many people, you, as you know, you all know it, uh, we go out for coffee and everything, buck stars and the like, and... Um, Love that place. Uh, he's telling these paranormal stories and people kept saying, Keith, why don't you write this down in a book? You should write a book about all these. And finally I took the hint and decided to do it. So your book has been handed down by oral tradition, you might say. <laughs> we heard a lot of this. So to speak, yes. Yeah. Well, that's why, you know, I, it's my first time seeing the book because, you know, it just came out and I'm, I'm actually Excellent. going away this weekend for a trip. So I got something to read this weekend. Yes, you are. And uh, I... We, I've noticed I'm um, in a few of the chapters yes, uh, because of course. some of the wonderful investigations we've gone on. Oh, yes, yes. Um, what was, uh, out of everything in your book, Keith, what was your, the favorite, your favorite thing to write about? Favorite thing was, I think, when uh, first coming into my own in paranormal investigation, when it wasn't just 
an isolated group of uh, confused teenagers going around to different haunted spots and doing research in between, as you well know. Yes. Yeah, sure. Going to the local library, things like that. Uh, waiting for anything to do with the paranormal that came on TV to actually being in an organized group and going out and doing real investigations. Nice. And finally getting some respect for it. Hey, that's, that's all that matters, man. It's, just, it's, it's all the hard work you put into it. Yeah, you know, over that's the awesome. years. That's awesome. Over the years. Keith, if I may ask, what was uh, most challenging about writing your book? Did you find anything particularly difficult, any aspect of putting together these stories? What was most challenging about actually producing your first book? Trying to get me on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get Brian on the phone, yeah. trying to interview people and everything, and basically disciplining myself to get it done because I made a lot of starts and... Um, you know, like on Gilligan's Island, here's that great American novel you keep starting. Yeah. But uh, just basically disciplining myself to put it all together and uh, finally getting a deadline where I had to get it out. So, And by then I had like umpteen chapters, so I had to really whittle it down. There's my finish. saying, if you want another chapter out of Keith, just ask him when his book's going to be finished. Yeah. Get another <laughs> chapter from him. Yes, yes. Yeah. He, he, he was heard that from Carl and Sandra and Renee, too. He was heard that from Renee and... Uh, but finally, it is done. Good. Finished right. product. That is the important thing. But now you have more material for your next book. Yeah, yeah that is true. Very true. Um, what about Ed and Lorraine Warren? How do they figure into your book? Well, that's, um, that was kind of a turning point in itself. It was in the early 70s that Carl and I attended a lecture yeah. by Ed and Lorraine Warren. Now, we heard about these famous ghost hunters, or ghost busters, they were called both, <laughs> that were actually coming to speak at Rhode Island yes, College. They were the ghost hunting couple, I remember. That's yes. how they were first yes. built. Ghost hunting couple, yeah. And I thought, wow, maybe we're not so insane after all. These people go all over the world investigating these things. And as an added bonus, of course, once we got there, we found out that Ed Warren was also a demonologist. And I'd been intensely studying on angelology and demonology didn't really have any um, outlet for it again, but uh, I thought if I could take an example from these people, you know, maybe that will uh, be something very positive that I can channel this because I had been praying about it and he was my answer. Exactly. And we became lifelong friends with Ed and Lorraine after the lecture. Mm -hmm. I actually, I actually got to meet Lorraine because of you. Yep, yep. And at the yeah. uh, Unifcon, I was all like a little schoolgirl, all nervous yeah. and stuff. It was <laughs> all Hopefully, you get to see her again. Yeah, I hope so. I, in fact, I just watched. Uh, I bought it at uh, one of the major video stores, um, the Haunting in Connecticut, the actual, the original. Oh uh, yeah, the the, mm -hmm. the one that's you know on TV. Mm -hmm. I got to buy the DVD of that, and I watched that, and I saw John and, and, right. and Lorraine yeah. and all that stuff. So it was, it was pretty. Lorraine said, "Yes, dear, I've heard about you too." <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I know. I was like, oh, I hope it's all good. <laughs> It's, it's interesting mentioning John because John was doing the same thing. We didn't know each other at the time, but uh, he was like me. He was a young, skinny kid with hair down to here, breaking into abandoned buildings. And, nice. uh, but I we had to see a picture. Of I know. That. I need to see a picture of that. <laughs> right. Well, Johnny's office with hair down to here. Yeah. yeah. That'd, that'd, be, not. that'd be that'd be pretty funny. Right. Did exist at one time. Have you ever been to his haunted? Museum? I've been to, yes, his original haunted museum, which was right in his house. I haven't he's been crazy. to the barn yet. I haven't been to the barn yet either, but I went to his, that day. He's crazy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I keep all that demonic stuff in there. Oh, yeah, right, right. Well, I was literally standing there. It doesn't bother him. No, it doesn't bother him, but it bothered his wife. I can't yeah, well, why he's got a barn now. Yeah, oh, exactly. out in the barn. A haunted barn. Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was standing there one day. You know how in the old, the old place he had the... The, the dining room table where we have his yeah. we have his, his meetings and then the bathroom is right next to that where his, the uh, haunted room is. Mm -hmm. It was like about nine o'clock at night, so it was dark. Yeah. And I went to the bathroom. I walk out and it's of course pitch black in that place. I walk over there and you hear things moving around, shuffling and oh, whispers yeah. and voices. I'm like, you are the most craziest dude in the world. <laughs> 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 yeah. like this. Yeah, we know you and dolls and everything. Uh -huh. and is it, Still coming in. Oh yes, and this dolly was possessed at one time. And I'll be out, <laughs> out there waiting for you out in the car. Right. <laughs> yeah, do not doll this doll. Right. Mm -hmm. I, that's, and that's the whole thing. Like you would have to go into the back of his room to turn on the light. So he had to walk by all the stuff. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. Are you crazy? <laughs> He's got the haunted organ there and I know. Mr. Skull and Mrs. Yes, Mr. Skull. Skull. Yes, 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 yes. But anyway, so I just you know getting off the subject here, but that's okay. Cool. Um, but now, now who now in the book itself? Yes. Who, do you, who did you like writing about the most? 
like who like I mean obviously yourself and Carl, you know, the the, the main people like mm -hmm. did you like writing about people that you knew before taps or during or after or Oh, I liked it all. I liked it all, but there's so many memories, and I want mm -hmm. you to get it all in. But of course, as you know, in paranormal investigation, not everything's exciting. No. Not everything will <laughs> translate no. in book form or the media. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of my best memories are just sitting around talking like we are now, chatting, and uh, with all these psychic experiments we used to do back oh, in like, the 70s. Oh, like and, in the, uh, the Hard Rock Cafe? Oh, yeah, right. Oh, yeah, the, the Hard Rock Cafe. That's a great memory, too, you know. Oh, like, I miss right that. About, yeah. Doing the class in yeah, Boston and going to the Hard Rock. Now. Why? Why? And Brian's got his mouth full. He's saying, why? Why am I known as the evil twin? Brian just says, look at you. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's we can mention the HR Cafe as long as we don't go there tonight. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, is the chapter, and I haven't got to see the whole book yet because, you know, we just got here and big bang boom we're on the set now is the chapter with the 60 below zero weather the 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 breakfast souffle right. chapter in there no that will be in book two oh, i would cool. imagine <laughs> it will it's coming out that, that was one of my favorite memories no, I I brian took some chances in the barn like walking over some like shaky floorboards and i think that's cohegan it's cohegan yeah but i don't want the where were we um well that's sabbatus sabbatus yes right oh, yeah, yeah, they do. I did yes, in, that, in that barn yeah, when it was like right. uh about between 40 and 60 below zero. That's right. when you walked over a door that was just there because you know, we had no natural lighting. Yeah, and that's that, uh, that's one of my favorite memories of us. Like we had the, we all crashed there that night. Yeah. And I'll never forget this as long as I live. We had to share a bed that night. Yeah. And this man falls asleep within seconds. Wait a minute. All of a sudden he goes. Beep. And Brian, in the same bed, sleeping. Oh, I've done it. You know, together. No, no, but it, it, it happens. You know, we go on these investigations. And they only have like. A couple of places for us to sleep, so we all crashed in the same room. And I, I just wanted it documented. Yes, yes, documented. It's, it's fine. <laughs> but I'll never forget because you fall asleep within. You fell asleep that night within seconds. Like literally, I was just getting I was so exhausted. I was just getting just settled done. in, and I was like, "Kid, you like?" <laughs> I'm like, "Oh my, this is like three and a half seconds." Performing <laughs> 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 a blessing in forty below. <laughs> oh, I know, I know, that was crazy. But that was one of my favorite memories of, of investigating. With you. I, like obviously, then you know all the whole blessings and. Skohegan. My lips there. were freezing, actually. Well, we uh, remember the breakfast souffle the next day. Yes, right. It was awesome. <laughs> and <laughs> like everything possible you can have for breakfast in one day is in one dish. Yes. So keep the bottom. It's like a casserole with cornflakes. Yes. <laughs> the breakfast awesome. souffle is in book two. It's not in this edition. So if yes. people look for that breakfast souffle, you're not going to find it in Paranormal Reality no, Book One. No. I was just talking about the whole right good memories we had. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, Skohegan was good though. Mm -hmm. Skohegan. Oh, yeah. was, now that. Yep. that Actually, I had to uh, split that into two chapters. No kidding. Mm -hmm. I, There's, uh, did you mention the whole uh, fiasco <laughs> about the dinner? Yes, yes, yeah, I mentioned that. Yeah. That was in it. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to these two buddies talking around the campfire here. Well, it's true because we were, uh, you were there, weren't you, for Skohegan? Yeah, I was there. He was there the second, second time. The second time. He wasn't there when we were blessing with the dead chickens, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're all, we're, there was like 15 of us <laughs> in the barn. Remember that? Well, yeah. There was like 15 of us in the barn. Yeah, right. And we start blessing the barn. I start helping you out because I'm, I'm, I'm doing the spraying of the holy water while you're doing the blessing. And every once in a while, like, somebody would just disappear. They'd be, just take <laughs> off. And by the time we were done, it was like about a three-hour blessing. Yeah. We had cobwebs and everything all over us. <laughs> yeah. We had to walk over dead chickens, dead yeah, frozen three chickens. Snow dress we're walking yeah. through. And we're like, where'd everybody go? And we walk inside, they're all eating meatball grinders. And, and, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, <laughs> thanks a lot, everybody. Appreciate it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, make yourself at home. Yeah, I got frostbitten toes and yeah. <laughs> they're all sitting there nice and cozy. Oh, yeah. that was horrible. Well, we've got I a wishbone you might want to chew on. Yeah, yeah. seriously. I got some other good investigations yeah. where he gets fed. They never feed me. No, <laughs> no. I'm lucky no. if I get a bottle of water or, or a cup of coffee or something. Coffee, <laughs> the ride up there was an experience in itself. Oh, you were riding up in a van, and there was another van that was, like, turned over on the side right. of the road. I know. That was just ridiculous. Yep. And the snowstorm, the blizzard. The ladder la that just disappeared off the face of the earth. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. We just, well, find it next spring. That's it. It wasn't ours. Yeah, I didn't care. <laughs> right. And, of course, we had uh, author Jody Picoult on yes. there with us. Yeah, she, she, got, she got pretty freaked out that night. She did, yeah. yeah. I don't blame her. She'd never actually been in Well, it's probably time we moved away from Skohegan, Maine, and, you know, Sabbatus, and... Moved on to other materials. How, how about if we go back in time? Yes, yes. Want well, to go back in time? Pyro. Yes. What is it? Pyro. What does it stand for? Pyro. Yeah. Right. Wants Pyro. To know. Yeah. Right. That's uh, affiliated with Rhode Island College. And when we went to see the Warrens, 
they were naturally at that lecture. That's how we met them and became affiliated with them. Parapsychology Investigation and Research Organization. Now I understand there are some groups uh, that do go by pyro today, but uh, yeah, that's what it's still called. Ryan's group was pyro for a while, wasn't yeah, it? Pyro. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. But yours was the original. Yeah, mm -hmm. ours was the original. That was the first pyro. Yeah, Rhode Island College. In fact, I devised the logo, the Greek letters pi and rho and two red triangles. It was pretty neat on the notebook. Right? Now, how we started out was, you know, very unsophisticated compared to today's equipment and investigation techniques, but there was something, I would say, almost magical about it. You know, I get very nostalgic about it when I think of that. Because it was more than no tech, and it was just getting in there yeah. and investigating. Yeah. Exactly. You know, the weird thing is that today you see, like, a college group on TV and how they're so respected by the college, and um, mm -hmm. everybody backs them up. Back then, we were the pariahs of the, of the uh, college. I mean, most people didn't even know there was a paranormal investigation group on campus. They'd be surprised to hear about it. And we, we would come to our meeting, somebody would be in there, oh, we need this room for tonight, you have to go someplace yeah. else. We wind up we in a noisy up. lobby with everybody walking around, oh, you know, trying to do psychic experiments there, you know. But uh, oh, Just like when I was in high school. Yes, exactly, you know, exactly. It was totally different made fun story. Of me. Nobody knew what was going on, they all thought I was crazy. Mm -hmm. So it's like now it's like you, you're a ghost hunter, you're like, yeah. oh, oh you're, that's awesome. Then you graduated to a yeah. national level of right. getting yeah. Yeah, picked on for a while. Totally, totally different story. Yeah. Don't even get me going on that. That'd be <laughs> cool. That's a whole three hours back there. We'll do that special sometime. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> Hello, Mr. McCready and all of you from back then. Very nice. He's still alive. alive. He wouldn't be alive now. Well, he hears us one way or another. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Keith, how about talking about just one of the cases okay. that, that's, that's in the book? Sure, I'd be glad <laughs> it's in the book. Yeah. I was, one of the cases. I, 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 was, I was thinking Harrisville. What do you think? Oh, yes, Harrisville. One of my uh, yeah. favorite stories. Yep. My first major investigation, how this had come about, and you know about this one, right? In the Harrisville section of Boroughville, Rhode Island. Obviously, this was a time prior to the internet. We really had no way of getting the information except word of mouth. So I came up with this idea one day, and I told the chairperson of the group, Donna, that uh, I'm thinking of putting a little ad in the paper. She said, Go ahead. <laughs> so I put this little tiny ad in the local papers said we investigate unexplained occurrences free of charge. I just thought it would be just ignored or laughed at. Lo and behold, three weeks later, we were contacted from a woman by a woman from uh, Harrisville, Rhode Island, who was uh, actually experiencing a severe demonic siege. The Perrin family, her and her family, had moved into an 18th century farmhouse, and we were like a godsend. Somebody's actually going to care and not laugh at me. So she contacted us, and we went there and did experience some very terrifying phenomena. Of course, what we experienced was nothing compared to what the family themselves was going through. So this was not Donna LaCroix you mentioned, the case manager. I was just going to say that. Right, right. <laughs> I <laughs> think that was not to be confused with, with you, Donna. I think that was the year she was born, actually. Yeah, we don't want to age you. <laughs> right, right. It's exactly. No exaggeration but, there. Right? Actually, that story is also mentioned in uh, Tom Dagostino's book, Haunted Rhode Island. So it's uh, a lot briefer in his his version, though, because I was there, and I tell the whole story from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. Yep, the Perrin case, and uh, Carl was on that, too. He experienced yeah. a... Uh, we cut our teeth on that investigation. Yeah, so yeah, speak, it was, yeah. A, you know, our first major investigation turns out to be a case of demonic oppression, so... There's nothing wrong with that. I remember the first case I went on with you guys was demonic yeah. possession. Yeah. Well, your interest in demonology, Brian? Well, come yes. on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> let's go to Sohegan. Let's find out. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Thanks for, thanks for making me wet myself. <laughs> you can handle this. The rest is a cakewalk. You heard it here. <laughs> you know, it, it was the original huh? dude run, I can tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> but in that case, um, with the Perrin family in Harrisville, uh, we did experience some genuine phenomenon there. And instead of, you know, freaking out, we stayed with it, fortunately. And um, I suggested that we contact Ed and Lorraine Warren our friends the Warrens, who of course are very experienced, and uh, we're going to consult with them. They did more than consult, they actually came down and became involved in the case. That's so, awesome. um, you know, cool. strength in numbers. Oh, definitely. definitely. Work out for all parties, yeah. Especially yeah. when you have somebody as, you know, as knowledgeable as Henry Lorraine Warren, that's kind of like, you know, that's, that's, that's good backup to have, I can say that much. Right, right. right. There was actually controversy then, just like there is now. A group, a rival group from Rhode Island College, heard about our case, they, I guess they eavesdropped, and they actually came to the house 
to discredit us to the family. So, no. you know, I mean, you know, it's That's not sad. just now that this yeah, the intrigue goes, goes on. Yeah. There's even drama back then. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it just wasn't natural, nat nationally known back then. So That's ridiculous. you got to love that. How, how about um, moving ahead a few years? Mm -hmm. um, Brian was uh -oh. a member of uh -oh. the Atlantic Paranormal Society um, before you and Carl, and long before uh, myself. Yeah. Um, can you talk about your first meeting with uh, with Jason and how you got involved with right. the well, Carl, Paranormal Society? Carl and I had been in a number of organizations, been in Pyro, Monitor East, and we toyed with uh, founding our own organization for a while, and we were doing like local investigations and um, doing the occasional radio interview and helping people when they needed it. But uh, one day I was internet surfing, and I came across this little site, a little insignificant site, but it looked very sincere. It said the Atlantic Paranormal Society, J Jason Hawes. There were no pictures on it, no stories or anything, but uh, gee, these guys uh, seem like they're on the level. And then I saw it was a Warwick number, so gee, I got to contact this guy. You live in Warwick. Right, yes, live in Warwick, so, uh, which is now, of course, known as Ghost Hunter Central, as they <laughs> yeah. like to refer to it. Ghost Hunter Central. Right. But we met, we met some coffee at a local shop, and um, we got to know each other, and he was very impressed. You, you've you been in this uh, paranormal investigation realm doing demonology, and you're not known nationally yet? I said, no, we just, uh, we just do it. And um, so he immediately invited me to join TAPS, the Atlantic Paranormal Society, and uh, I want you to come to the next meeting and meet everybody. I want you to meet Grant, who's our acting co-founder at the time, because the original co-founder had, you know, had some personal issues. So uh, Grant stepped up to the plate, dutiful like he is, and introduced me to the group: Andrew Graham, uh, Valerie, yeah, Brian. I, I wasn't there yet. I came in, I think, a couple months later. Well, you had you had been there. Then I think you were forming your own group. And then you came back? Yeah, I think something like that. Okay, yes, yeah. yes, yes. That's what it was. Spring boarded. Yeah. Yeah. And I, know, I know it wasn't there when you first had your, your right. first but meeting I, with Jason. But right. Not at, not at my first meeting. But yeah. then I think I met Jason first. I? Yeah. It was, it was yes, close you met him and then we met him. that time after, and yeah. I was telling him all about my brother and what an investigator he is. Yeah. Yeah. Demonologist. And then uh, meeting you, you were very interested. i got to pick your brain about demonology, oh, man. Yeah. i got to get involved in... Uh, oh, it was funny, too, because I first met Carl. Yep. And nobody ever told me that you had a twin. <laughs> <laughs> so when we <laughs> came walking up, you guys, even, you know, obviously you're twins. And I was like, hey, Carl, what's going on? He goes, I'm Keith. I'm like, no, you're <laughs> Carl. <laughs> and he's like, guy's got a weird sense of humor. Yeah, I'm like, are you, are you serious right now? <laughs> like, you just told me you were Carl about two hours ago. <laughs> no, it's... Oh, that felt like a fool, but hey, <laughs> that happens. We're quite used to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I believe it. I believe it. It's not bad, but it, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a quote. <laughs> but again, of course, with uh, with taps, that was uh, nothing compared to the way it's grown now. No, I mean, no. Like, you know, no, obviously not. We used to be able to go to coffee shops and we just hang out. And yeah, right. Do investigations, and now it's like you know. And who bedroom. are you guys? I'm I'm interested in your conversation and things like that. You know. Yeah, yeah. It was it was it was crazy. It really was. It was, it was a go to a radio though. station without getting mobbed and things like that. And yeah, <laughs> I, I I I was very fortunate in meeting you and meeting all of you and uh, doing this for. Yeah, I, I was doing it for such a long time by myself, and that's exactly basically how I met Jason. It's mm -hmm. because you know I looked at the site. I saw a site that said the Atlantic Paranormal Society, so I'm like, yeah, hey, well, email them and see what happened. And that's how I met you guys. Yeah. And then later on, Sandra and, you know, Renee, where I think she's in the back somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's, you know, we only have a few minutes left, and I wanted to tell you that it's been an honor over these last 10 years that I've known you oh. to investigate with you. Thank to, you, Brian. To I appreciate that. Learn from you, learn from Carl, learn from Sandra. Um, it's been, <laughs> it's, I've learned more some stuff than you. Yes, I have. Don't you get. Anything's but, possible. <laughs> and, uh, don't don't put your don't don't, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank but, you, Brian. No problem. Appreciate but, it, Brian, um, very much. I'm very proud of you. Like I said before, this is uh, a great achievement mm -hmm. to to get this book out there and and tell everybody. Look, this we were yes we were a group before the show Ghost Hunters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. we were there. We were we were exactly. You know, I was we were doing this way before Ghost Hunters ever came out. Oh yeah. Because yeah. a lot of people don't realize that they're like, oh, how long have you been in the paranormal? Seventeen years. What the show hasn't yeah. been around that long. Like, right. 
No, <laughs> I've been doing it for long. That, the book details a lot of history that went on be, prior to the show Ghost Hunters, when it really took off. Yeah. That's what I like about the series, and not just this one, but the, the books that are coming out, too. It, it does talk a lot about mm. things that don't have anything to do with, with the Ghost Hunter that's, show. Well, that's good, though. Right. You know, yeah. that, 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 you know, it brings us back to our roots, like I said. We, right. we, we used to go out, and uh, people don't realize, me and you right. and Carl and Sandra, take money out of, out of our pockets, pay for gas, pay yeah. for food, Absolutely. travel. <laughs> right. You spend a few thousand yeah. dollars a year just on this stuff. And the TV show, not just ghost hunters but the multitude of tv shows you know they do a great uh, service in that they bring the paranormal to national attention but and also they make things uh difficult in some ways you, you know so to speak that you know the media and the you know trying to get out of the pressure of getting out a show every couple of weeks and stuff like that which is why we branched off and founded new england anomalies research exactly yeah. exactly and i'm glad you did this mm -hmm. I, you started this show three years ago this month, yeah, uh, because uh, people get that information that they wouldn't get off a regular internet site or a regular, you know, just or even off ghost hunters. A lot of the, right. a lot of a lot of stuff that you guys talk about is not broadcast on the show. Mm -hmm. right. it's, it's it's this is a learning tool for a lot of people. Right, exactly. So I, I really do appreciate that, and I'm glad you had me on again today. Well, I really we really, really appreciate you being here, Brian. Brian. Really do. And I must say, it's been an honor knowing Keith these past 54 years. I'm <laughs> looking forward to the next 54. <laughs> there you go. There you go. We're investigating. We're 110. I'm such an that. optimist. Yeah. Now, in the last couple of minutes, I know Sandra wanted to ask me something. I think about a particular cemetery. Yes. Ask well, him right on the air. So right <laughs> yes, you can ask me. Ask me now. You can't deny it. We've got too many more. Brighton Cemetery. <laughs> Brighton Cemetery, yes. That's one of the chapters in the book. The Mothman of Brighton Cemetery. Yes. We have our Mothman, too, here in Warwick, Appenard, Rhode Island. Actually cited in uh, the mid-70s by your brother, Dick. Absolutely. Brother Dick uh, and his uh, wife at the time. Brighton Cemetery, also be the, being the old Taps. Training ground. Yeah, that, that, was, that was tap. No place else to go. Go to Brighton. Now there's, there's a different taps boot camp now, but now that was the yeah, original uh, taps boot camp. We won't talk about that. Um, <laughs> but the uh, yeah, we actually just went there a couple weeks. Yeah, ago. yeah, yeah. yeah. And you With scared the paranormal them? living heck out of me. <laughs> this man, this man walked up in his cape from from the state Slater Mill. Yeah, we're all standing we're around. Those tours, yeah. And I'm, I'm doing a, a little tour through there, and I was had him come along. This man is walking up toward us. Michelle goes, "Is somebody coming?" Like, hello, who are you? And he wouldn't talk until he got about this far. I almost tackled him. <laughs> um, I thought he was coming up to... to, to not the first time either. <laughs> no, it's not the first time. Hopefully it won't be the last either. The vampire well, I just want to point. say, Keith doesn't usually wear a cape. No, 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 no. No, no. no um, I just come back from Slater Mill. Yeah, so he hadn't yeah. gotten time to change yet, so... <laughs> but we only have a couple seconds left here, and uh, so you want to close it out? You want me to do it, or... You can well, I'll just say, um, if you want to contact us... Um, Here's our contact information. You'll get in touch with either Lisa Dualabi or uh, Renee Smith. <laughs> they're, they're case ma there are case managers. Or even Nathan uh, is also one of the people that you might get in touch with. Or if you want to contact us at the show, go so near at cots.net, and you'll get either uh, Keith or myself. And you can take it from here, Brian. All right, well... <laughs> Until next time, you'll see Keith and Sandra and Carl again. I'll and definitely have to come back. Yes, I, I hope so. I hope you come back next time because you're the host. Happy trails <laughs> to you. But I hope you all had an enjoyable time. Thank you, studio audience. Thank you. Thank You've you. been wonderful. So glad to have you here. And um, um, Keith, uh, can, you, can you sign this for me? I will certainly uh, autograph right. it. I appreciate it. All right. I'll get my, my book to read. Thank you so much. God bless. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night.